leaders who came before you. So the first thing I'd like to do is thank all past league officers and league presidents. If any of you are in the room, could you please stand just so we can acknowledge your past service to the league? Prior, prior officers, prior leaders, I see, I see a number of you. Thank you. Um, thank you all for building the league to what it has uh, become. I also want to uh, thank uh, the, my own village board. Um, I think my village president, Chris Elner, is here. Chris, are you here? Oh, Chris, could you stand? And I have one trustee here, Erin Moran. Is Erin here? Is Erin here yet? Oh, there she is. Erin, can you stand? I want to thank you both. Um, the, the, the obligation of uh, serving in the league board is a commitment, and essentially the, the village gives something up for the time that I take to serve the league. So I want to thank you and for the board's uh, willingness to allow me to serve in this role. Thank you both. I'd like to thank uh, my own league board members who've already been introduced, but it has been an honor uh, to serve with you. I have learned so much. Uh, I, I've gained a lot of knowledge, but I've also come to learn because of how remarkable all of you are, the extent to which I can still learn. So I thank all of you for imparting that on me. And finally, I want to thank uh, my family, uh, my wife Tanya, uh, for her ongoing support over the course of my time uh, on the league board. The when I. It's interesting, when I uh, first came on uh, a year ago, we had transitioned to our very first virtual league uh, annual conference. And society around us was kind of like in this crumbly COVID mode. Things were just kind of, kind of crumbling in our society. Now interesting here, as I come to uh, 12 months later and uh, the building that the league office staff was in itself is crumbling. So it's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny beginning and end to my time on the on the league board. For those who don't know, the building where the league's offices are in Madison has essentially been condemned and is going to have to be torn down because the, uh, the the foundations were beginning to crumble. And I guess uh, what I want to close with is to say that while buildings uh, are capable of crumbling, uh, what you have in your league staff is itself a tremendously firm foundation for our organization. So what I'd like to ask the league staff to do is stand and receive a huge round of applause from those of whom you are serving. So please stand the league staff. Please stand up there. Stand around and thank you all very much. So 
really the, the, the definition, the statutory definition of village and city uh, in the board's discussion suggests that it really isn't achieving the intent that we, that was intended of our constitution, which is that smaller communities have the opportunity re to represent in the position of president, and then larger communities have the opportunity to present. Where there maybe is a fine line to that question is, why pick 5,000? Why, why is that the point of, of, of uh, division between large and small? Um, and I think that was a matter of discussion before the board where we ended up feeling comfortable. There was no science to that choice. Uh, more, more, I would say, let me add though, that the average community size in our state is under 1,500 population. So we did feel as a board the desire to keep that number relatively low when we pursue a small city, so truly we are seeing representative, representatives for the small communities. And I guess I'm gonna ask Jerry, did I explain that well enough, or do you have other context that could help? Um, thank, thank you. The only thing, I agree with everything that Todd has said, the only thing that I would add is that, particularly, and this year is a good example, our small municipality representatives, let's look at Danny Helgerson as an example. Danny's the mayor of a city. Under our bylaws, even though he represents a small community and could speak for small communities, he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit in the category. So this is meant to give the nominating committee a broader, a broader option, more options in identifying officers. Sir, does that answer your question? And I popped it in and see where it came from, but. I'll accept that. Okay, thank you. Um, we're willing to take time to address other questions that anyone might have about this. Yes? How many units are in each of the new categories? Jerry, do you want to grab the mic? Um, is, is my, my father of five voice enough? <laughs> Okay, I'll use the microphone. Her question was how many units of municipalities are under 5,000, how many are over 5,000? I don't have an exact number for you. It is not half and half. Half and half is at 1,400. It is, if I had to, the last time I looked at this number and looking around for Robin Powers to verify it, it's about a third are larger than that and two thirds are smaller than that. That's roughly what you're looking at. Um, does that answer your question? Or did you have a follow-up? Okay. okay. Uh, other questions? Tammy? I'm wondering how this correlates to membership groups. Um, if there's any, if you have any um, answers about, you know, I, I understand that the group is funded and it's based on geographic size. So will this sway the uh, Um, the question is about whether the presidency and the type of the type of individuals in the presidency would affect the dues for our membership, essentially. Or no? Just, um, it's quite the Well, I guess what I, what I can say, I don't recall in our conversations with the lead board, Jerry, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that the discussion about um, this presidency rotation, that there, was, that there, wasn't, there was no relation discussed uh, and no discussion about dues in any regard as part of that discussion. It more, it more had to do with um, the appreciation and desire for large versus small, and defining that differently than city versus village. That, that was the, I think, the, the extent of that conversation that I can recall. Um, other, 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 another hand over here, yes? Really good question. The question with Jerry, I'll let you take this, was about the nomination process and how that process takes into account the opportunity for diverse representation. That's an excellent question. 
Under your bylaws, the nomination process, the president appoints a nominating committee, which by, which by tradition has been all of the currently serving past presidents of the league. The bylaws, back up. The nominating committee, the only requirement upon them is to appoint either a village person or a city person. There is no other requirement upon the nominating committee of who they should include, who they should not include. Um, I will tell you that in past years, geographic diversity, large, small diversity, city village diversity, um, and ethnic, uh, gender diversity, ethnic diversity, have all been taken into, dis into account and discussion. Um, there are no hard and fast rules that any of those should or should not be included. And her question was, what is the timeline for the process? Typically, the president appoints the nominating committee in August. They have typically two meetings. They will meet uh, toward the beginning of September, and then they meet again immediately prior to this business meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Um, that appointment of the nominating committee, uh, at least for the league president in its, the president's role, is to, is to uh, quite simply appoint the past presidents into that function. So uh, that, that's, the, that's the, the makeup, at least the makeup that has been in the committee. I will say, and I, I really, really do um, thank you for bringing diversity into the discussion. Um, I'm also thankful that our league, this over the past 12 months, has you know, quite frankly started its journey into reckoning with matters of diversity in our state and in our organization. And we have not yet come a long way. There is a much further way to go for us to move the needle on diversity, equity, and inclusion in our organization, and frankly, in our state. I guess what I can add, thank you. And what I want to pledge to you is that we in the business organization are working on it. We're not getting it perfect, but we're committed to working on it. And I, I hope that, and I implore upon the leaders after me um, in the league presidency and the league board to continue that work and to the extent that I can continue to be of support and help and provide energy to this work, I'm absolutely devoted to doing that as well. So thank you. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you. Um, okay, other questions on the on the proposed amendment. I really appreciate uh, the questions, thank you. Um, with uh, seeing none others, can I get a motion to approve the constitutional revision? Uh, name please. Hey Scott, is there a second? Second. Name please. Thank you Chris. Did we get that information Jerry from the first and second? I got Chris, I did not get Scott. Scott Gussie. And Chris Frederickson. Very good, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll remind you once again that before we vote, that each city or village president has present as one vote. Hey, Chris, I'll give you the village's vote, okay, buddy? Uh, would those in favor please signify by saying aye? Aye. Those opposed signify by saying nay? The ayes have it, thank you very much.